Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the iterative design challenge that's completed as part of the OCR GCSE Design and Technology. During this video, I'll be referring to the 2018 specification that you can find on the OCR website if needed. For those of you that don't already know, the specification splits the GCSE into two parts. First, we've got the principles of design technology, which is the exam. The exam's worth 100 marks and it's worth 50% of the final GCSE. Secondly, there's the iterative design challenge. That's also out of 100 marks and that's worth the other 50% of your final grade. The exam board recommends that you should spend approximately 40 hours completing this work. Within this work, it's your opportunity to demonstrate your design and making skills by completing one of the realistic contextual challenges. To make the completion of this work fair, OCR releases these contextual design challenges on the 1st of June, with many scores using the February half term as the final deadline. As part of the project, the exam board expects you to demonstrate your ability to follow an iterative design process based around the concept of exploring the user's needs, creating potential design solutions, and then evaluating these solutions to assess their suitability. This process is repeated again and again in a cyclic fashion until a final design prototype is presented, tested and evaluated. All work is assessed against these three key areas which are further split into the five assessment strands when the work is marked. It's probably best not to worry too much about the way this is split up. However, I'm now going to introduce you to assessment strand one so that I can talk to you about the first few sheets of your project. So, whilst this may look daunting, you only really need to consider a couple of pieces of information at a time. Essentially, you've got the things that will be assessed down the left side of the page and the assessment criteria for each of these things on the right side of the page. Now, the first thing that you'll need to do is conduct investigations of the context to help you analyse the tasks and show your thinking. To get the highest grade in this section, you need to look at the mark band 4 on the right of the page to find out what you need to do. So, in order to get the best possible grades for this section, you need to demonstrate comprehensive investigations that identify a breadth of challenging problems and opportunities for further consideration. How do you do this? Well, on the 1st of June, you'll receive the three contextual challenges from your teacher. Please note that the ones I'm showing you now are from last year, which was 2019-2020, and these will not be used this year. The easiest way to start your project is to begin with a mind map that highlights all your initial thoughts about the specific contextual challenges. I'll now show you how to doing this using the first contextual challenge from last year. So this one is about sustainable living. The challenge is that in today's world, consumers are increasingly concerned about buying products that are quickly outgrown or that become obsolete before they cease to function. Explore the role of design in creating products that have an extended lifespan. To start my mind map, I wrote the topic in the middle of the page before adding my thoughts around the edge. When adding thoughts, I tried to differentiate between them by writing them in different colours. However, they probably overlap in places so don't worry too much about doing this. It's also important to demonstrate deeper thinking when you do this, so try to add additional layers of depth to your notes to really justify your thoughts and show off your creativity. For example, one of my thoughts were based on disposable versus non-disposable products. Although I didn't know how to actually use this information, you can see that I've added it here, uh, thinking about how I could potentially extend product life how I could avoid planned obsolescence, how I could change the power of marketing to show that people don't need to upgrade. At this point in time, it's not important for you to present the best design idea or solve your problem. You're simply exploring the task and presenting a wide range of potential opportunities. Your mind map should be full of ideas and thoughts whilst keeping them clear and legible. Once you've done the first, you can move on to the second and third. This will probably take you at least an hour and my advice at this point is to jot down any creative ideas or thoughts regardless of how feasible or crazy they may seem. For example, in this mind map 
about travel disruption, I was thinking about the fact that people may need the toilet when stuck in motorway traffic. Although making a toilet doesn't appeal to me, it's a valuable idea that could be solved by creating a neat design concept. Essentially, in your mind maps, you're trying to show off your existing knowledge and thoughts about the possible project areas. Once you have done them, you'll want to bring them all together in your first design sheet. In this example, the student has clearly set out the page into three columns, with each column based on each of the three context challenges. It's wise to start this page by actually copying the challenges onto the page before providing your own summary of each context. Try to write in your own style, providing the examiner with a clear overview of your thoughts. At this point, it's worth revisiting the assessment criteria for this section. In this section, you need to identify a breadth of challenging problems and opportunities for further consideration. At the end of this page, you should provide an overview about what you're going to do next. In all instances, you're going to be completing further research into the possible opportunities. However, we'll look at all of this in the next video. Hopefully, you'll now be able to complete the first page of your iterative design challenge to set yourself up for an interesting and challenging project. Design and technology is one of the few subjects where you have a lot of freedom, so explore designing the tasks and seeing what you can come up with. See you next time.